Welcome back to Those Four Girls. This is Lainey Sullivan, your host, and we are talking about community building with the pros. And I have an amazing panel today. We are talking with Lori Lejeur, Dustin Stout, Andrew, which I'm not going to pronounce his last name, and then Andy Hatchett. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Doing fine. Great. Great. You guys all are community builders. You guys have been building communities for anywhere from six months to the last three years on Google+. And I don't know what you guys have outside of Google+, but we're focusing on the Google+, aspect today. So tell me a little bit about your communities. Let's start with Lori. Lori, you've got a community of about 20, close to 25,000, or you just crossed over 25,000? Yeah, we have, I think, 25,000, like 500 or 600 or something like that. We gain about 300 new members a day. And yours is the interior design community. Love, yeah. and we love your backdrop. See, you guys can't, you have to know who Lori is with her backdrop. <laughs> yeah. I also own customized walls, so I can obviously print my own. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Hey, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so how long has your community been running? We actually started the day community started. I kind of um, had been on Google Plus experimenting with it, and I wasn't a huge fan because as a woman, you got hit on more than you had engagement. Um, and I started the community as a way to find actual people that were interested in the same things I was interested in, like interior design. It was like that little commercial that Google Plus did about communities sold me. And we really just sort of took off pretty quickly. We, I think we had like 150 members in the first day. and. We grew. <laughs> yeah, which is amazing. I mean, your community, I've been in, it's a very active community. So, so congratulations. Are, I think the moderators, you know, there are a lot of people who started communities and realized it's an actual job, and they left it, and so it actually isn't moderated at all. There are probably more of them like that than there are communities that are really active, that still have moderation, that still have the owner involved. And, um, you know, I think it makes a huge difference in, in interaction. We have members who post our community and then post other home decor types of communities, and they always tell us that engagement on ours is sometimes quadruple, if not more, than on the other communities that they're putting their content on. That's amazing. And, you know, you made some really good points that we're actually going to touch on in the show today, so thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> And then Dustin Stout and Andrew, they share a couple of communities. So, hi, guys. Hi. Uh, or I guess we'll start with the shared ones, then Dustin can get into his, because uh, Dustin has some really cool ones that, that, that are fun, too. Um, but uh, basically, uh, we have the social media communities. Um, they're the social media strategy, social media professionals, creative social media, and social media discussion. A lot of social media. Um, but uh, those basically came out, um, like, creative was Dustin's uh, baby, and uh, strategy strategy was mine, and a couple months ago, I think it was months, I guess, or maybe it was an entire year ago at this point, um, we don't even know when the when the start date was, but uh, we came together, um, we, we split ownership among the top moderators in the community, and we decided that this was too big for one person to, to own, to have, you know, so we kind of we started something a little different. So, you know, we want the most active members in the community to become moderators, the most active mods become owners, and the cycle continues, lets the community evolve, change, grow, and not just die out when one person gets too busy and walks away. Because um, that's usually what happens, um, you know, on every network, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, doesn't matter. There's a lot of defunct communities that people just walked away. Um, but, yeah. It's true. And... That's like Lori said. You, you guys have both said it. There's a lot of communities that nobody's really moderating. So we're gonna definitely go go back and touch on that. And then Dustin, you've got um, a couple of communities yourself that you own with Andrew, but I mean separate from Andrew. So yeah, I uh, I actually I I own a number of communities, and uh, one of them I've just kind of let go. Um, it was actually the first one I started: WordPress designers and developers. Um, that uh, you know it was really just a passion of mine. It was it was you know I'm still an active WordPress user designer, uh, not so much a developer, more of a front end guy. But um, it kind of goes on its own a little bit. But I also own the My Coffee Addiction community, which uh, was spurred out of my need 
to express my coffee uh, love slash addiction. Um, just got over about 1,300 members in there, I think. And uh, I also own the Creativity Inspiration. So again, an overflow of really my, my passions, uh, coffee, creativity, inspiration, that I didn't necessarily want to uh, bombard all of my uh, public posts with. Um, so, uh, yeah, those are two really fun communities. I also do a lot of moderation in the Google Plus help community. i am uh, actually been named a Google Plus rising star and official ambassador for Google Plus. And uh, so, you know, one of my duties or uh, expectations as holding that role is to heavily uh, moderate and uh, go in and lend a hand in the Google Plus help community, which is just about... Uh, just over 326,000, almost 327,000 members. And I can tell you what, that is a full-time job. <laughs> or at least it can be. Uh, by the time I'm done answering one person's question, there's at least 10 new posts in the community of people needing help. So, yeah, communities is no joke. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, you guys are creating creating some really great dialogue that we're going to touch on today, so I'm excited. And then Mr. Andy Hatchett. Yes. <laughs> My community, and I've got one main one and one sort of minor one that I'm letting fester right now, is user to user. Basically, it's showing people how to push and what buttons to push using Google Hangouts or the Business Hangout application. I started them because there wasn't a place where people who were using free versions could go to really get detailed on hands information daily. When I first started it, I was on from 8 in the morning to 8 at night. Now I'm on twice a day for two hour shows daily at 2 and 6 p.m. They come in, ask any question they want. There is no agenda. We talk about whatever the users talk about when they come in. And basically, it's, it was to help people because, like I said, there was nowhere else they could go unless they either had a membership to Rami's community, the Hangout Masters community, which I'm also a member of. I'm one of Rami's first children, so to speak, <laughs> or the Business Hangout and their paid community. And I just had kept people kept asking, I want to practice. Can I get somebody to practice with? So I set up the thing and now come in and say, you want to practice at 6 o'clock? You'll have six, seven, eight people volunteer to practice with you. You know, it's, it's just a place to start. I've got 300 people. It started on January the 6th of this year. So I'm, I'm pleased with what it's done so far. Well, and what I love about what you guys have all done, you've all found a need and you've filled it. So not every, you know, I think there's a lot of communities. We were talking yesterday about there's a lot of communities about the same topics. There's a lot of health and fitness communities. There's a lot of social media communities. There's a lot of web development communities. So how do you differentiate yourself if you're going to start a community? And why start a community if there's already 30 of the same topics? Can I, I, topic. can I jump in? Um, I, I, you know, because I think we have a good example because we have four social media communities just ourselves. Um, you know, and they go like, well, well, which one do I post in? What, what's, what's going on? So what we did is we looked at that we looked at what what needs of a community are and and you know also what features do we have in Google Plus and what features don't we have um, so there's certain things that you know may be appropriate in one community but you know another community it's just it's it's a faux pas so we have strategy where we we treat it like a user a crowd sourced curated magazine. Um, it's the best of the best posts. Um, they have to be good Google Plus posts as well as good content being linked to or, or shared or what have you. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of meta that way. We want everyone to be a lesson in and of itself. Um, like, this is what good Googlers do. Um, you know, and then we have professionals, which is more just, it's us, it's marketers just hanging out and chatting. You know, you can share your links. You Well, you know, try not to do that too much, but you know, get feedback from other people in the industry, whereas strategy is more toward businesses. Um, you know, and then we have discussions where we literally text only, you can't link, and it's ask a question or, you know, start a discussion based on a topic and one sentence starter, that's fine. Um, you know, it's very free for all there as far as what you can post, just not links to your blog. <laughs> um, so yeah, each community has a different need that it fills. 
Well, and you just said some some key points there, and the one that I like, and I think that we all agree on, is don't spam a freaking community, right? I mean, we all don't drop your links. Engage. What is engagement? It's not spamming. It's it's straight up not spamming. So some, something people don't seem to understand is they think engaging a community is posting their content to their blog. They they act. Uh, you know, when when I moderate a post, I've I've gotten this a, a good amount. So I'm wondering like who is teaching them this stuff, but they they come in and I, I moderate their posts. And I'm saying, oh hey, you know, welcome to the community. If you could please just read our guidelines first before posting, because you know, in our guidelines we say, interact first. You know, that's that's how we know someone didn't read the rules because we don't see any comments, any anything from them. Um, but you know, they come back like, oh well, I was just sharing good content into the community. That's what engagement is, isn't it? I'm like, no, no, you're sharing your links. It's self-serving. It's not for the community. It's for you. Um, yeah, right. a lot of times whether it's building authority sorry a lot of times I think those people are just amateurs and uh, they're really only fooling themselves <laughs> uh, they know that it's self promotional and uh, they just you know they'll find any excuse to excuse their behavior and we find them in all walks of life. I mean, we're talking about communities today, but those are the same people who you kind of look at a second time in a networking event in person or when you're having a conversation in some other place. And so if we set those aside, I, why you started one, I am really excited about learning more about some of the purpose, the, the actual need you were trying to fill when you went, oh, I have something that a group of people can contribute to and this is the idea and how did you know so and it caught on you guys are doing a fabulous job so what did that look like was it quick was it slow was it tangible did it take a while to materialize well I look at it if I'm posting and I'm posting something about me then I'm not helpful to my community because if I'm being helpful to my community members, I'm posting about them and what their needs are, not about what mine is, not about what I like, not about how I do things, but how it's the best way they could do something. Like if somebody comes in and they have a specific goal for their community or their hangout or whatever, give them the best advice as to how they can achieve their goal don't get them to buy into your goal. If you're trying to sell your goal, you're no good to your community. Right. But I will add to that, Andrew, that sometimes you do need to talk about yourself because I'll give you myself as an example. A lot of people come to me, uh, you know, they hire me, they, they contract me or hire me to consult, and they want to know, how do you do this? Or how do you go about doing this? And sometimes you do need to oh, really... Oh, if, if they ask, that's fine. But I'm saying you don't start out with yourself. You, right. Well, you, okay, no. so I should, I should clarify because I'm not saying people might think about starting a community to further their business. There is a need for bringing people together that you guys all saw that nobody was doing and other people rallied around that. And right, what like, does that innovation look like? Like strategy we don't look at as a business because we're all we're all competitors. I mean, that's to be the honest truth. Like every single member of the community is competing with one another. Um, uh, so, so you know, when you put 150,000 marketers in a room, that's what you're going to get. I mean, it's it's you kind of start limiting. Uh, but um, something that we've really liked is is this idea that we can put past the competition and just work on our craft um, and and really just polish it and that's really what's most important to us that that our clients are getting the best and that's why you know people some people don't like that I'll that I'll sometimes call out a spammer or a scammer or something like that but honestly it's because of the clients it's because of knowing people who've been scammed in the past and and being like you know what if someone is being shady being you know black hat they they need to be told you know they need to be told and if they're if they're told in public and they jump at me I'll say it in public too you know, so or if I just tell them in private, they jump at me, right? You know, <laughs> if they try to justify it, like you know I mentioned before, it's no mas. <laughs> exactly, Lori and Lori, you have the you have a competitive community as well. Everybody's yeah. a designer, so how do you guys deal with that? 
Well, we started in that way. I was already on all of these other social media networks. I was on Twitter, I was on Facebook, I was on LinkedIn, and I had a lot of great relationships, but I was finding like I wasn't getting further with people. You know, I wasn't building more personal relationships because, you know, for specifically Twitter, you have 140 characters. You know, you have at this person, at that person, at this person, hi, at this person, at that person, at this person, good morning, you know. It takes a long time to become personal on some of these platforms. LinkedIn's more about business, Facebook, you know, you try to only keep certain business people in your in your profile, your personal profile. So I wanted a place where I could share some of the information I was learning that was helping my business. And of course I wanted to attract interior designers because I own a wallpaper company and I wanted to work with interior designers. So I figured, you know, they're in the same struggle that I am. They're starting, um, they have a web presence too, they have a website, they have issues with that. And I figured we all really could help each other. Working in this same industry, um, we can share information and help each other grow. And it, it's, it really, I think, felt, you know, there was a need for that. There wasn't, um, in our industry, there's a lot of interior design as, um, associations. There's, um, you know, trade shows, trade events. And the, this other stuff wasn't covered as much you know, how to use Pinterest to get more clients, you know, how um, covering the latest trade shows, you know, it was all of the things that anyone who was working in this industry would really kind of be interested in. So we kind of thought of ourselves as like a Huffington Post for the interior design professional and we went at it like a business, you know, we really treated it professionally from the beginning. And I think that's key to have a strategy. I mean, Andrew's talked about it. You guys, you know, you guys have all talked about it. Having a strategy and following that strategy, you know, making, you know, if you want to have links in your community, have links in your community. If you want to have it as a business, if you want to have it, if you don't want people competing, find a way to create a community within your community. It's not just the community as a whole, like I just have a bucket of, a, of people, but get people to engage and have conversations and work together and collaborate and find things that they can do together rather than working in this competitive space where everybody's just trying to compete for business with each other. Yeah. Well, I, you said yeah. you were saying have a plan to stick to it. I just wanted to add one quick thing. It's also don't be afraid to evolve. Um, you know, like like Andrew was saying with with people. You, you might find that your best intentions were completely incorrect and you 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 know completely misread the situation and your community has to change you know find out what your most active members want to do find them ask them if they want to be moderators help you shape the community you know it's it's bring in bring in people to support you sorry but <laughs> continue <laughs> oh no that's good i mean i think that's key that's what we did in those four girls was you know we you know community needed needed some assistance you know I mean I'm one person right we're all one person trying to grow our businesses and engage and do all these things and then all of a sudden now we've decided we're gonna own a community and we're like what the hell did we just sign up for <laughs> so you have to find people that are participating and that's exactly what I did with those four girls who is contributing who is involved and who could be a, who could continue to be a part of it who could grow it who could help grow it yeah, but you also have the, you know, my idea was that you can volunteer your time pretty much anywhere. You can do those networking groups that they have. You can do a Chamber of Commerce. Why not volunteer your time in a place where you're actually talking to the same people that are doing the same exact thing that you're doing? And, you know, that helps you. It helps them. Everybody wins. And we also operate strictly as a nonprofit, so every one of the moderators is an actual, you know, an industry expert. They're published in magazines, and they've been on TV, and they're really like, you know, there's stars in our industry, and that also brought a lot of attention to the community outside of Google+. So we're, we're on Google+, we also own like interiordesigncommunity.com, we're, we're everywhere. <laughs> you know, we made this a real thing, like a real volunteer organization. How about the rest of you guys? Did you guys do any of that with what Lori's doing? 
I mean, you can even do influencer outreach, like for any you would do for any business. Um, you know, like we we went out to um, you know this is that's the community is actually how I got to know Mark and Eric, uh, Mark Traphagan, Eric Enge, uh Eric Enga. Uh, I always say his last name wrong. Sorry, Eric, You're gonna kill me. Um, so. <laughs> But uh, right, so we approached them and we were like, "Hey, you know, we see you guys are working with the authorship, author rank community, which is now the leadership and thought leader or something. I, I don't know. They're changing the name, <laughs> but um, it, it's you know, we approached them. And we were like, "Hey, we have this community. We'd love for you to be on the team. Like, it's it's you know, and that's we just asked. We we asked for help. Um, you know, sometimes that's all you got to do. And someone might see a good opportunity with the community that you started. Um, you know, it was still small then. You know, small-ish, or I guess it was getting big. But yeah. Um, to right. your question, Lainey, uh Andrew did actually go out. He he got the the, the domain name for Social Media Hangouts uh, for all our communities, and he actually does a really great job of you know creating a web. Uh, a web hub, so to speak, of all those communities and uh, being able to kind of solidify. Uh... And I like that. I, I like that, you know, we did the same thing with those four girls. We own those four girls.com and, you know, we're able to, you know, transition between the website, the Google Plus page, the community, you know, the YouTube, and, and literally, like Lori said, have it as a volunteer kind of an organization. Jess, you've got a couple of comments for us. Yeah. The first is Cheryl says, hey, Andrew, great advice. It's about the community, not you. And Heather piped in and said an enjoyable part of the community mindset is letting it evolve, typing just as I hear Andrew say these words. So we have both Andrew Perfect. right on. Yeah. You know, and that's actually, so this is more about it's not team building, but it is a true type of collaboration. It's a different type of collaboration. It's, out of everything you're saying, if there was one word I was going to pull out, that would be it. So I wanted to add really quick, just to jump back uh, to you know Dustin was saying and and Lainey about the having a website. Um, but uh, as far as when you have, um, so you have your website. Remember to go in. You can set up little subdomains for yourself. So we have our community guidelines. We have set on a page that goes. It's policy.smhangout.com. So whenever I need to link to the policy, I'm not going searching for the link or copy pasting. It's I just type it out real quick. I mean, at this point, it's like second nature. Um, same with each of our communities. We have strategy.smhangout.com, professionals.smhangout.com. They all, you know, have that same theme, like just like any other business would do with their with their portals. So remember to, you know, it doesn't take long to set up. It's super easy through, you know, whatever service you use, like Google Domains or GoDaddy or HostGator or right, Bluehost. There's a million of them. <laughs> so that, there's some really smart advice, you guys. So let me just take a quick uh, station break. You are listening and watching those four girls, and we've got Andrew Hatchett and Andrew and H. I'm just going to call you Andrew H. <laughs> that Dow. is acceptable. That's the hard thing. They're both Andrew H. <laughs> Andrew H. <laughs> That's true. Oh, crap. That did <laughs> nothing. Okay. We've got and Andy Hatchett, Andrew H., Dustin Stout, Laura Lejour, and my co-host, Jessica Duell. And we are talking about community building. We have talked about finding the needs and in a community and, and creating a need, having a strategy, crowdsourced, curated magazine. I really liked what you guys said about that. Creating collaboration, policies in a website. So let's talk about how do you um, how do you create and find value for your members? Because obviously your members is what the community is all about. If you don't have members, you don't have a community. How do you maintain providing that value for them? Moderate. <laughs> sorry, um, that, sorry. That's my number one. I'll let you guys do, but that's that's just keep it clean. I mean, it's really if you can bring people in of quality, as long as you keep the non-quality down to a minimum, um, you know. And there's a lot of I'm saying non-quality because it's it, it might also be just things that are inappropriate, not necessarily bad posts. It's just you know sometimes we get a share and it's just like a share that came five minutes before it. And we go, well, you obviously didn't look in the community, you know, it's, it's, we just had someone share that, you know, maybe, maybe comment on their post instead, um, you know, so sometimes posts that are moderated are great, they're just, you know, Facebook put out their bit of news, so of course we're going to get 15 posts about Facebook's new X, you know, whatever that is, um, so, you know, we, we limit it to one per, you know, per five-day period, if it's one good post, that's all we need. 
Um, you know, you're not going to hash it out over 15 posts. So. And sorry. and I like what um what you guys do. And Lori, you do another initiative, and we'll go into initiatives. You guys, Andrew, you guys go and you are like the top five blocks of blogs of the week, or the top five posts of the week. And Laura, you do an initiative that is like, you know, Blog Tuesday, like promote your Blog Tuesday. So let's talk about initiatives, and, and I think that's a really great way to provide value for your community is getting them involved, you know, showing off the top people. Well, maybe not the, not the top people, but, you know, the, the top posts and the top engagement and, and all of that. How do you guys feel about that? I love mm -hmm. it. I mean, we keep a lot of initiatives. So we have, you know, our elite IDC Elite Circle Share that we put out. We have um, Brag About Your Blog Tuesdays. We have our weekly hangout on Fridays. We do a group Pinterest board. So we try to keep those things so that people have want to engage and want to come back because there's always something that they can see new and that they can participate in. It's giving them an outlet, <laughs> you know. Something yeah. that really helps as well is we have large circles and large followings ourselves. You know, it's every one of us has a decent following. I'm, I'm, you know, it's it's anything, any big thing above a couple thousand is huge. Honestly, um, if you have a targeted following, that is. Um, mm -hmm. So, what you need to remember is also you need to share. You need to go into the community just as much, even if you're commenting on every post. You know, something that I haven't been doing, and and you know, other moderators and strategy haven't been doing, and our engagement has been going down because of it. Is that we're not sharing it out to our audience. Um, you know, I've been so busy. I have not on Google Plus as much, and it's you know, it's the same thing happening that I was worried about in the first place. But um, so we're gonna be sitting down over the next couple weeks and and really working on it and. You know, we need to be sure to promote that best content. You know, it's it's if it's good enough to be in our community, it's good enough for me to share, and so I should share it out. Um, you know, so that's that's my two cents on there. You have to remember to use your own audience to boost your community, and vice versa. Dustin, yeah, we have a, a thing. We're starting to do tutorials twice a week now on Thursday nights and Friday afternoons. We we close Friday afternoon so the overseas people can get in because they, in England, it's too late for them to come into a nine o'clock thing at night. So we're doing, trying to get them both. And and we're what we're doing is taking like on the Google thing, we're going how to use the chat. We're going down through how to use the screen share. We're going to do tutorials on every one of those icons. And then we're going to do the same thing with the business hangouts. Terry Lee Britton is coming in to do a tutorial on Pixwork. So they know how to create lower thirds and, and put them up in into the hangout toolbox so they can use them. You know, and it's the little things like that. Once they get by the basics, you have to find other things to, to keep the interest. And like I say, mine is a transitional because people come in, learn to use the thing, then they go out and start their own communities and that type of thing. So we're always trying to find some sort of new hook to keep those that hang around interested enough to keep coming back yeah and Dustin how about you well I mean each each community is going to have something different each community has uh, you know the members are there for different reasons for my coffee addiction for instance they're just there to really express themselves uh, it's a self-expression type community whereas in the social media communities people are really there to sharpen their creative edge or sharpen their strategic edge or stay on top of news. So you you first and foremost, like anything, you have to start with what is it my members are coming here for, and uh, you know really find out how you can you can give them what they're looking for. Uh, you know my coffee addiction again. It's it's more about uh, like minds and just sharing uh, fun, interesting stuff about coffee. So people go there just to kind of get their fix and to feel. Uh, to feel accepted uh, amongst people who also love coffee like they, they do. But in, in strategy, social media strategy, they're looking for the hottest news, the best tips. So for us, it's really providing a unique perspective on uh, the latest in social media, the you know some new uh, Facebook trick or an algorithm change and how to you know how to adjust for it. So it's really uh, you, you have to understand your audience and that's that's a business principle that goes with with anything that you're building. You just understand what it is they're looking for, uh, find a way to provide it, and uh, 
do it with the utmost excellence. That's kind of what I'm all about. Is the, you know, I, I don't accept uh, anything less than the best from myself and you know from my community as well. That's why I'm pr I'm actually kind of hard on my my coffee addiction because even in there I don't accept link dumping or image dumping. I want uh, thoughtful conversations to take place, and so I think uh, the quality above quantity should always be focused on. It's probably why me and Dustin got a, well, got along, along so well. Um, <laughs> if anyone if anyone knows me, they know I, I I sometimes take it out too hard on some people. You know, I, I I've learned to soften because I I basically if it's a normal business owner that has no business in social media essentially they're not a marketing company they don't know better I, I try to take some time and teach them however if you're a marketer and you are spamming my community you're gonna hear it you are it's it's gonna happen and and honestly you should know better just just get better do do your job <laughs> sorry Hallelujah. preach on that <laughs> <one>. okay <laughs> well, I mean, you're making us all look bad honestly it's it's you ruin the industry for everyone you know it's it's that's when my parents go wait that's a job you're you know like your job is a job like no stop playing on Facebook go back to engineering you know it's it's the real business you know that that you know they want but I'm like this is this is real this is just the new Mad Men this is you know this is what it's becoming <laughs> it is Jessica yeah, I was just going to add, it sounds like quality is a big deal, and since that is a somewhat subjective term, being able to clearly articulate that quality as everybody is sharing here in their terms is also probably part of the differentiation process in, in terms of how people will want to engage and interact and support the common goal. Here we have a couple of comments. The first is from Amelia, letting it evolve. I like that, Heather. I pretty much have done that, but I feel a uh, let's see, interaction is slow, then the owner maybe needs to think of something sparky to interject and grab people's attention. And she's working on that skill. And Heather responds, this is great, this is a nice little side conversation happening. Amelia, I'm not sure what that's like yet. My community is very small and incredibly active. The best part of my space is that it is safe. People that are new to Google Plus have a desire to learn and grow but want to be cared about. We are a safe place to say, I don't know, or please don't laugh, but... It's a great thing to watch the members create it for themselves. That's a very good point, the quality basis, because there are communities that would be very good, you know, that are very good for beginners, and they people you you want, you know, they want new bloggers to come in and post their first ever blog post because they want people to just get better, and that's, I think that's perfectly great. Like, there's definitely different communities for everyone, and I don't try to. Like, right, I'm, I don't hate beginners. I was a beginner two years ago. I mean, completely honestly, I, I was an engineer. I'm, I'm now, a, you know, now I'm a marketer. Yeah, magic. Um, <laughs> that's, it's just, you have to do the research and learn. That's, you know, so. So you guys, oh, go ahead, Andrew. <laughs> I, I, I forgot, that was, I was trying to get back to my original train of thought. You had mentioned um, that it's, you sometimes have to interject. Uh, Jessica, you were saying that, you know, uh, from the comment, and I was saying it's almost just like running an HOA. You know, you have an interview. You, you try to guide the interview in the right direction, but every once in a while the conversation stalls, and you have to have things in line that are in line with the interview, that are in line with the person in the interview, which is just like your members in the community. So you have to, it's, it's all very similar. You know, it's just a different vehicle. Um, so, yeah. So how do you, how do you get your moderators to um, work to help you grow the community? How do you get them to buy in? Do you, do you vet them out before you ask them to be moderators and say, these are the responsibilities and expectations that I have to grow the community, to be a host on the show, to moderate, whatever, you know, whatever your expectations are. How do you get them to participate because it's obviously not a paid position? I I'm going for your luck. company. <laughs> <laughs> let's start with let's start with Andy and we'll just run through everybody. I I, I got lucky. Michael Daniels joined me at the start and if it weren't for him it probably would have never gotten off the ground. Uh, Heather was one of my first members, and Debbie Davis was one of my first members. And they just sort of automatically fell into moderator positions because they helped get the thing up off the ground to begin with. And mine's small enough now that I don't need more than four moderators at this point. I've got a, my eye on a couple of 
members that should we grow big enough, I've got two others that I may approach at some point to be a moderator. You know, but I can tell by how active they are and not only how active they are, but how they participate. Whether they're they're just, you know, answer people's questions or whether they point to other links or you, you can watch somebody over a period of time and know what kind of moderator they're going to be. And so there, it's sort of a self-vetting process. You don't have to do an interview or anything. No. I like that. And that's we do the same thing. It's, it, I find that it's a self-vetting process. Uh, Andrew? I, I wanted to add something to what uh, Andrew was saying. Um, <laughs> but um, as far as... Um, the, the oh, and I just lost my train of thought. Anyway, with moderators, I'm bad today. I am so we've been very busy at Wheel, and I, I have like 15 things that I'm getting to do after this. Um, so so with our moderators, it's it's you know we we like I said before, we have our most active members become the moderators. Our most active moderators be, can become owners in the community. Um, that's at least the idea. You know, we still haven't let it live long enough to get to the cycling part, but um. You know, it's it's you need to you need to not only have people that are there all the time, but like Andrew was saying, with the quality. It's we had one member that I don't I don't think he's coming back. It was it was some some home sales, you know, some realty company, and they were going on every single post every single day, going thanks mention, thanks mention, thanks mention, and and sometimes at a point where you'd see five of them pop up within a minute's time. He's not reading content. He's not engaging. That's just going through the motions. And I and I commented on the, one of the posts, and I said, if this is all you're going to do, please find another community. Like, I'm sorry, but we want people that are actually engaging. I'll take five plus ones in shares over 500 if that means people actually read it. I mean, it's, it's 500 people can share my post, but if they're not reading it, what's the point? I mean, that's, that's Empire Avenue type stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, it's engagement for the sake of engagement. I don't like it. <laughs> Um, sorry, but that's the back back to the moderators. We we you know active members, moderators, owners. <laughs> I'm a sidetrack king, and I think it's Laney frozen or am I frozen? Looks like Laney might be frozen. Looks okay. like Laney. Wondering if be. I was just saying something really important and she was just <laughs> in deep thought about it or or oh. what was going on. <laughs> um, what you said. If or I talk too long and she's just mad at me now. I'm getting the silent treatment. Come on, lady, <laughs> please. Please. <laughs> oh, I think that's another really cool. Well, does that, what else would you guys like to add around what Andrew was just talking about? I think that um, not every moderator is a good fit. We've been we've been doing this for a long time. And I've actually had to fire a couple of moderators. They're both, and that's the hardest thing ever, by the way, because I've actually managed people before, but I've never had to fire someone who I'm not paying. <laughs> you know, what I mean? you know, that's <laughs> that's a tough situation. Um, not everyone has the same goals for your community that you have, and I think that although your idea is so great that you bump up great moderators to owners, I think it's very important to have one person who's guiding the ship, you know, and and knows where it's going to go. And the great moderators, um, we, have, we have an excellent team right now. We have 10 moderators. They're all fantastic. We don't just help each other on Google+, Plus, but we actually help each other with our own businesses outside of Google+, Plus, and we really operate as a team at all times. You know, we're always promoting each other and helping each other and we do this like teamwork makes the dream work thing and we really like rally around and we have our own separate little community that's just for moderators and we talk and you know what are we gonna do this week and what's what are the plans we organize that way um, but you just will like find <laughs> that not everyone <laughs> not everyone has that same goal for your community as you they might come in as a moderator and be very active but with their own agenda and with something that they want to see happen and it's not that what they want to see happen isn't good but it isn't what you want and you started it and you put the work into it so you need it to go the way you need it to go and you know there are times that it just doesn't work out and you always have to keep that in your in the back of your mind 
I mean, Laura, we had a few misses with with moderators, and and I and just to you know, if any of those people are watching, I I still you know I still like you guys. It's but you yeah. have different priorities. That's exactly yeah. it. It's some people are just here to make the sale, and that's that's you know what? That's fine if that's for you. It's just not exactly the mission that we have in our community. So you know, there are tons of communities that say, hey, drop your product here. You can you know have fun. That's fine. Yeah. Fine by me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got cool. the thing, you know, if uh, I know Google is filled with marketers, okay? And I know they're here to market, and that's fine, but don't market to me. <laughs> if, if, I, if I'm looking for something, if I need something, I'll come find you. But don't come knocking on my door because I don't want to be in a rough thing. We're the Google generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's like, you know, a soft mention of your product, that's fine. But a hard sell, and I'm out of there in a New York minute. But that's it. Social yeah. media is not, and I, I know we're getting off of the community topic for one second here, but social media is not for the hard sell. It's not at all. It's never meant to be. It, it shouldn't be. You know, it's, it's, I do joke, you know, they can go to those unmoderated communities, but they won't get anywhere. And that's the point is, is the hard sell doesn't work. Um, yeah, so, it, it, it just seems so that. stupid to me. Like, they, they continue to do it. And are they not looking at the fact that they're getting zero clicks on their content? I mean, they just continue. I go to some of these link dump communities, and uh, I look at some of their bit.ly or short URLs. If you don't know the bit.ly trick, if you take a bit.ly URL and add a plus sign to the end, you'll be taken to the analytics page. You can see how many people have clicked on that, that uh, yep. link. And most of the time, it's this many. <laughs> But they, Wait, know, how many? How many does <laughs> Even even when they have activity, and that's the thing to uh, note is there's people that are just there, just going plus 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 plus, hoping that that gets them something magical because someone told them if you comment and plus one on posts, you'll get followers. No, like it's not that easy. I mean, it's not hard, but it's not that easy. Uh, it, so yeah. coming, and I love this because I think that everything that we're just talking about actually directly relates to the success of the communities that each of you guys have built. And that's one of the things that I love. So as, and I'm listening to you and I'm like, okay, so there's an element of collaboration, yet there was an initial vision. And that initial vision can grow and change and evolve. But there has to be somebody that holds that vision so that the community really doesn't fall apart. It actually can continue to grow and evolve and serve a purpose. And in the end, it's to serve others. It's to what? give back. Let me uh, piggyback on that and say it the way that one of my favorite speakers says it. His name's Andy Stanley, and Andy Stanley says it this way. He says, the vision never changes. Plans change, but the vision never changes. So a vision is the end goal, and you, know, you think about, about a plan as a road to get to that goal. Sometimes you get, go down a road, you realize there's a roadblock or there's construction. Sometimes you have to take a detour. So the vision doesn't change. But the plans change all the time. So you have to keep that clear. Always keep your vision in mind, but be open to changing those, those, uh, the roads that you take, the plans. Beautiful. And on that note, I would like for each of you guys to say one final thank you. Uh, well, I want to say thank you each for being here. And if you would tell us where we can find you outside of this Hangout so that we can learn from you, connect with you, and continue to grow in our shared visions, whatever those are. Okay, Andrew? Which one? You. <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> my lower third says it all. There's a bit we link to the user-to-user -to -user live community. We're there 2 and 6 p.m. Eastern every day, Monday through Friday. If you need me any other time, you can ping me. I'm usually on from 7 in the morning to at least 9 or 10 at night on the computer, so I'm almost always available if you need any help with anything. Thank you. All right. Andrew? Andrew, too. Um, so <laughs> thank you very much for having me on. Um, you know, I, I'll, here I'll pop up a little little links here. Um, so, you know, you can find, if you need me professionally, uh, wheelmedia.com. If you just want to check out the communities, our Hangout show with Dustin as well. Dustin's in there. Um, that's at smhangout.com. That's the bottom link there. So, um, yeah, just check it out and um, hope to see you. Thank you, Andrew. And Dustin? Uh, you can find me, Dustin W. Stout, 
Uh, on Google+, Plus, I'm there all day long. Uh, but you can also visit my blog, Dustin.tv, that's D-U-S-T-N, without the I. Um, that's where I share all my best thoughts. And, uh, of course, uh, yeah, Google+, Plus or there. It's good. And do the Dustin. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I will never live that down, ever. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Dustin. Lori? Uh, you know, just the, I think it's plus Lori Leisure on Google+. Plus. I have all my information in the About section, and you can feel free to stalk me. <laughs> Great. Thank you all. I'm going to turn it back over to Lainey to close up the show. Thanks, everybody. Jess, where can we connect with you at? Oh, the Those Four Girls community oh. right here on Google+. Plus. Oh, yeah, and InfusionPrinciple.com. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for being with us today. This has been a really, really good conversation. If you guys have not subscribed to Those Four Girls, make sure you got, hop over to our website, thosefourgirls.com, our YouTube channel at Those Four Girls Community, and it's all the link is in the event page as well. And then also do join those four girls community because you know we're all about community. So everybody, thanks so much. We are talking with Cheryl Locke and Renee Christine next week about YouTube. HOA hosts, you better tune into this one. So we're talking about the value of YouTube, the benefits of YouTube, why you want to drive traffic to your YouTube channel after, during, before your HOAs, and for every other you know YouTube thing that you're doing. So. Tune in next week, Wednesdays at 10 a.m., and we'll see you then. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.